Hello? My name is Hillik. And uh, I was uh, in synagogue this morning and was reading the portion of the Torah uh, this week. Incredible story of uh, Joseph that was sold by his brothers to Ishmaelite, and then they sold them to Moabites, and then they sold them to an uh, Egyptian that practically bargained about how much the beautiful 17 years old kid would worth. As you know, he dreamed that during the day they were in the garden and there were 11 of bundles came out and bowed to Joseph. He had another dream prior to being sold <clears throat> that 11 stars and sun and moon together, they came and bowed to him. And his father, Jacob, told them to shut down. And that was the reason that the brother hated him because of his uh, dreams. <laughs> that's crazy, isn't it? But that's life. And that's the truth. They sold Joseph and Joseph became a slave for uh, 22 years, I believe, in the jail of an Egyptian uh, uh, administrator or somebody with a high job that could offer to buy a, a slave at the time. And interestingly, today I discovered through a Bible interpretation that uh, the guy that his name was a Potiphar, he was uh, kind of uh, belonged to GATBL or whatever you call it today. At that time, uh, because Joseph was a very handsome kid, very nice, good looking. So he bought him because he was sexually attracted to Joseph. And then how things changed because his wife tried to sleep with Joseph, every day she was talking to him and he was telling her, look, I can't do it. You're a wife of my boss. I cannot do it. Plus, I'm not married. You married legally. And it's prohibited for single guy to covet a married woman. Therefore, Joseph refused until she tricked him. And we know the story that he left part of his clothes in the hand of Potiphar's wife that she tried to attack him, basically, and force him to sleep. Interestingly, this is not a conspiracy. It's written in Torah, meaning that happened, practically. <clears throat> The effect of the story of Joseph is politically very, very important. Why? Because within 22 years that he was in jail, of Egyptian jail, he was also serving as a servant of this administrator. And uh, even got him a wife, a daughter 
of his sister, Dina, that was raped in the city of Naples. That's why the brother Simon and Levi took their whatever they had, their sword, and killed everybody on the town because of rape of their sisters. Very interesting stories, correct? Now, I have reason actually getting and talking to people about it because in the end I'm going to prove that whatever was happening then is happening today in the United States and in the world, basically. But people don't see it because they don't see the connection. And I'm prove it that I'm going to prove it that there's a connection. So here we are. Pharaoh dreams about the seven cows first, and then second flowers the second time, and nobody can actually find a solution for his dream or any interpretation to his dreams. Until when he called every one of the sciences, because Egypt was an empire then, a huge empire, and they had scientists and they were very, very uh, uh, progressive country technologically compared other empires or other countries in the world. And nobody could find any solution or any interpretation for Pharaoh's dream. Until a guy that was in jail with Joseph, and uh, I guess he was a minister of drink that was preparing drinks for the king, uh, all of a sudden remembered about whom? About a young slave, Hebrew slave, basically, that uh, he found the solution and interpreted his dreams. Him, his dream, and the other uh, a minister that was in jail with him too. So when Joseph was there two years prior to that, to this, what we're talking about, uh, he all of a sudden had to go to the uh, Pharaoh, the minister, and said, I must admit to my crime, your majesty. That's what happened to me. And it was a young Jewish guy, kind of a slave that interpreted our dreams, and you allowed me to live, and you hang the other minister. So what they did, they ran to the jail, basically, and uh, clean up, uh, clean up uh, Joseph, I mean, and t- took a shower, and uh, dressed him nicely, and also he had to shave his beard because he was going to appear in front of uh, uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt, the guy with the money, like uh, Trump of then, let's say. But uh, actually, yeah, Pharaoh was a very, very nice uh, Pharaoh at that time. And Joseph came, and the king told him the dream, and Joseph told him about the seven years of... Uh, uh, good life and a uh, tremendous amount of fruits and food and everything. And it's seven years of famine that would follow the good seven years. And Joseph also advised and counseled Pharaoh. The reason that his dream was doubled was because God has this plan ready 
to activate, meaning there's no time. So Pharaoh realized that Joseph had some of the good stuff from a god of, from a Jewish god. That's what they thought, of course, because they did not touch Jews. Jews were enslaved and low life, like today. Interesting, isn't it? Joseph became king, meaning Pharaoh took his ring out of his finger and said, this is my ring, but this is you. You are above everything except my chair. The country is yours. Meaning it was a huge revolution. Now, every order came from whom? From Joseph. And they dressed him nicely and gave him all the stuff that the king has. Can you imagine being just in jail, in the bottom of a hole, and the next day you're a king? You're managing a huge empire? I mean, <laughs> come on. This is serious stuff. But of course, God knows what he does. We don't. Therefore, we do not understand God's action. Humans are very stupid. They do not understand God. And because of the fear of understanding him, they deny him. That's the easiest way to do, isn't it? Cancel culture, correct? Happens on our time. So cancer culture existed prior to every other empire and kingdom and Jesus and Muhammad and Moses at the time of Joseph when he became king of empire from the jail. Interestingly, Joseph started going out going on around Egypt and uh, basically managing the country outside, not from the castle. So he ordered everybody during the seven good times to save food without refrigerator for seven years of coming famine. Ah, how clever. It's said in the Torah, basically, that he was counting in the beginning how many acres or how many tons of food he's collected until he could just stop counting. Everything was stored for the time of famine. That's main strategy. That's main a policy and activating the policy. So here, seven years of good life ended, and immediately, maybe within a few years, uh, Bible says probably took a few years. Now, nah, yeah, not so long between, and uh, the famine started. Now, what happened when famine started? Joseph started feeding everyone that was coming from all over the world to ask for food. People hungry. When you cannot produce enough food, what do you do? What do you do? Nothing. You go and purchase it from a country that has a clever politician that saved so much food for seven years that the famine and had enough food even to sell it to outside people, to other humans that uh, they were hungry. So, this is the story of this week, basically what it said, it said that we are chosen our destiny by electing leaders that can guide us to goodness or destruction. 
And Joseph, of course, saved humanity and saved Egypt from falling apart. Interestingly, this week also we read about justice of King Solomon. King Solomon was son of David. David was king of Israel about 2,500 uh, prior to Christianity. And, of course, uh, he and his father both, they were king of Israel for 40 years. And at the time of Solomon, the peace, peace was all over the world and looked like time of Trump in the United States. That's interesting. As the country was very peaceful, the Bible say on King, uh, I believe on Book of King, uh, A to C, A, B, C, yes. Uh, the Bible claimed that there were two women, that they were uh, not uh, clean women, they were prostitution. It's clearly mentioned they were prostitution. That uh, they lived in the town in, uh, in one apartment together because they couldn't afford separately to live and pay rent. So therefore they lived together. And both they were pregnant. One brought a child three days after the one already brought the child. Meaning now there were two ladies with two babies in the house. On the third day, all of a sudden, <coughs> one of the babies was dead in the heart or next in the bed of the other lady that uh, actually what happened is one of the lady found her babies dead. So at the middle of the night she got up and she took the life baby from the other woman to his bed, her, her own bed, and left the dead baby to this woman heart. In the morning when she woke up, the lady came to feed her baby and the baby was dead. So it was a dispute. Whose baby is that? Because the lady looked at the baby, the lady with the dead baby looked at her and she knew that she wasn't her child. So they brought the matter to justice, to the king, Solomon. Every woman said uh, her story, and the king said, okay, judgment. Bring a sword, and they brought the sword. And the king said, here is my judgment. We shall cut the baby from the head all the way down, and we divide the baby, and each woman take half of the baby and go home. One of the ladies right away rejected the idea and said, no, if you think that's the lady that actually lost the child, she said to the king, no, do not kill any baby. I do not want the kid. Give it to her. And the other lady, of course, wanted to, the kid to be dead. So the judgment of the king was the baby belonged to a woman that rejected the killing. Very smart because a real mother could not see 
her child dead. She rather to see her life in the hand of another lady. Correct? Makes sense. That's one of the judgment of King Solomon. Now, connected it today, the story of Joseph and the story of uh, King Solomon to what's happening in the United States today. Actually, we are, the world is now, in a very, very shaky situation. While another country in the East attack another country and there is a war going on, a war that created by whom? By Joe Biden. Why the war created by Joe Biden? From a fear of any investigation of his action when he was vice president and who was the president? Barack Hussein Obama, number one enemy of the United States of America. So, there wasn't any war when Trump was president, and Trump was president for four years. And during the four years, the Senate and House of the United States of America tried to impeach him and get rid of him because Trump was busy doing good stuff. What Trump did, basically, he freed the market. He attacked the unions. He let the economy to fly. And outside of the United States, immediately he knew the energy is the first thing that we need in this country or any country. And the first thing that he did, he went to Saudis and made Ibrahim peace court between Israel and four other Arabic nations. One of the greatest achievements of any president of the United States in the last eight years or whatever. So Trump time was a good time. Trump time was the dream of Peril for a good time and a bad time. So we had the good time. And then to destroy the good time, here get up an evil that dealt out of the United States, under the United States Constitution, to destroy the United States of America because of personal benefit, of course. What else? All of a sudden, Chinese are good. All of a sudden, COVID was created by help of the United States to destroy Trump presidency, and they succeeded. The COVID-19 was unleashed by DNC first than Juan and China. And we see the result today. Two years. Inflation from two to eight. Why? Why I'm paying, instead of $70 electricity a month, all of a sudden $144, $165. What went wrong here in two years? What changed? Why I'm paying 50% more for eggs? What changed? Two years? One thing has changed. The first day that Biden occupied the White House, he signed 49 or 47 executive order. And the first one was to shut down the pipeline. That was the first executive order was signed by Joe Biden in White House. This is if Pharaoh was not listening 
to Joseph. So, whatever happened, 2,469 years prior to Jesus, happening today, at 2,020 years after Jesus. And the country connected to abortion, illegal killing of children. And for that, we have a new president, a new house. I gotta go, my battery is down. I'm exploding. I am exploding.